Welcome everybody, I'm Fabio Viviani and you're watching Fabio's Kitchen where every week we'll bring you an amazing dish made by me. Today, another quick simple recipe. Look at this, what am I opening? A cheese shop? I'm just kidding, it's not a cheese shop, but we are creating the best cheese sauce that you've ever had. How are we gonna do that? First and foremost, cheese sauce. It's very simple, but it's all about building layers of flavor with different cheeses. What I mean by that, if you have two cheeses in a cheese sauce and both cheeses are equally sharp or aged or soft or sweet, you're gonna have a cheese sauce that will fall flat on its face, assuming the cheese sauce have a head and a face. In this case, we have a variety that for aging, texture, flavor, minerality, smokiness, they're all different. So we'll create a knockout sauce. But first things first. I'm smart, so I turn that on first. And here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna add a decent amount of butter to a pan. <clears throat> Hear the sizzling? Good. You should. I'm gonna add some minced garlic. Minced garlic. If you, if you, see here's what I'm seeking, right? Roasted garlic, raw garlic is very heavy, but roasted garlic has a, a almost kind of a smoky sweetness to it. And in this case, I'm pairing it with some brown butter. Brown butter has a very distinct flavor itself. I mean, I, I, how do I have you smell this? Can we invent smell division? Now, you see the brown bits and pieces? That's toasted garlic. Now, we're gonna add some cream. Now, this is not a salad with dressing on the side, let me be clear. This is a cheese sauce. So we're gonna add cream to it. It's a lot of cream to it. And now we're gonna bring it to a boil with a medium fire. Here's what's important now, cheeses. First of all, hold the salt back. No salt in cheese sauce. We are using cheese like Grana Padano, Montasio, you can use Pecorino, we have cheddar, we have some Fontina. They're all different, but one common denominator for cheeses is they have a lot of mineral, and mineral translate in salt. If you salt your cheese sauce, it will be too salty, because cheese have natural salt in it, and they have a lot of it. So first and foremost, we're gonna add some really nice, sharp blue cheese. I love blue cheese. Most people perceive these as a stinky feet. Now, I'm a clean person. I don't know what stinky feet look like. Sometimes I have gym shoes that I would love to burn, but I don't think that that's the same as smelling a good gorgonzola or a good blue cheese. So we add blue cheese because the not creamy texture will add a little bit of grainy to the sauce. We'll add some, the, the blue mold, which is edible mold in this case, will add a lot of smokiness as well. So blue cheese goes inside first. Why it goes inside first? Because blue cheese is the one that likely will melt the least. So it has, it has to stay there longer. Got it? And we just stir at it. We just stir. Second. This is one of my favorite, Montasio. See, in Italy, we love to put brand everywhere. Remember those people that still buy Gucci shoes, that say Gucci on the shoes? Regardless of the opinion that you have of those people, in Italy, everybody's, everything is branded, even cheese, see, Montasio. Okay. So what I've done, I've shaved these, and Montasio is a cheese in Italy that, when you look at it, it looks like a Grana Padano or a, or a piece of hard grating cheese, but when you shred it, it melts like it's nobody's business. It's one of the best melting cheese while being kind of semi-hard, it's one of the best melting cheese out there. We're gonna add Montasio. Montasio tastes very nutty. Montasio tastes like it was aged gently. And, like I said, it melt beautifully. So now we have the sharpness of the blue cheese, we have the nuttiness and the creaminess of the Montasio. Then, a good amount of Grana Padano. 
It's gotta be there. Grana Padano adds a lot of mineral. This is our salt addition to the sauce. Grana Padano is a natural way to salt things that you don't want to add salt to it. It has a lot of minerality. It's cow's milk. It's aged, again, for, the, for a decent amount of month, and it has a very good, uh, sharp taste that is not going to overpower the sharpness of the gorgonzola. Then, I'm going to add this. And I skipped this for a reason, because we'll talk about this later. I'm going to add this. This is like, this is like a classic, traditional fontina. Some people could have some Gruyere. Some people could have some Hemmental. Now, I like Italian fontina when it comes down to cheese sauce, because you couldn't do a cheese sauce just with two cheese. So fontina is another very good, fontina is another very good Italian melting cheese. Fontina is sweet, and here, everything is dissolving. See this? All right. Then, cheddar cheese. There's all kinds of cheddar, all kinds of form. There is, um, you know, white cheddar, yellow cheddar. There is, you know, something like uh, jack cheese, which is a kind of a similar form of cheddar with pepper in it. There's a lot of variation. What I'm seeking for the cheese sauce is something that brings color. You know, associating cheese sauce in America, and you associate something that is yellow, creamy, coming out of a package, we all know what that is, but I don't like it. It's not cheese sauce. If it doesn't come from cheese, it's not even cheese sauce. So the reality is that I'm adding cheddar mostly for color because we already got the sharpness from the other cheese. We got the creaminess for the other cheese, but also some cheddar, they have a very distinct flavor that it doesn't hurt. And you can't call it cheese sauce unless you have four or five cheeses in it. And we add our cheddar cheese in it. See, the sauces start to become yellow-ish. See, now all we got to do is to reduce the sauce of a little bit, let the cream, some of the cream evaporated. This in five minutes will be ready. There is differences between real cheese and cheese product, like byproducts to cheese, like cheese in a can, the spray one. Uh, you know, American cheese. Look, I love, I love American cheese. There is no replacement of cheese on a good burger that American cheese can deliver as far as knockout flavor and creaminess and everything. But it's not real cheese, it's a cheese product. There is there inside, but it's not really cheese. Make sense? So when you want to do something, do it right. You want to do a cheese sauce? So if you, if you want to get a slice of American cheese on your burger, please knock yourself out. Do two of them. I love double cheese on my American burger. But when you create a cheese sauce, you can't go to hell because you're using fake cheese. You got to use real cheese like this one. You don't like this one? Find something else. Educate your palate by trying different cheeses in different aspects of your cooking, but use real cheese. I don't care if you support Italian cheese, American cheese, French cheese, whatever it is that you go for it, make sure the cheese is real cheese, all right? So now, this is cooking. Now, you're making a cheese sauce, right? So another thing to consider is that this is not salad with dressing on the side. There is some calories here. So if you think to make a lighter cheese sauce by using water or skim milk, forget about it. Use some creamy, heavy cream and some butter. This is not the time of, of saving calories, all right? This is the reward that you wanna prize yourself after you ran a marathon and you died for six years to do so. This is like the holy grail of let me have a good time eating food I like. This is not cucumbers. This is not like a raw carrot stick that might be really good for you, but taste like? No, thanks. This is what I want, all right? So here's what we do now. We just shut it off. Now, the cream, the cheese, the butter is a lot liquid as it's cooking because it's hot. As it cool down, these will become firm and thicker and thicker and thicker to the point that if you put these in the refrigerator tomorrow, you're gonna have the best spread of your life, literally. You're gonna have almost like a spreadable cheese because everything will tighten it up. So you can put these on a cheesesteak, you can put these on a sandwich instead of a spread. You can put these on your pasta as a cheese sauce. You can put these 
literally, if you add the broth to that and you add some broccoli, now you have a four cheese soup with some broccoli in it. You know, you can, the, the possibility for these are really endless. You wanna have, you have a pizza, you wanna make a four cheese pizza, use these as a base instead of the tomato sauce. It's really versatile. And the best part, if you have little mason jar, right? Your house, you could have some mason jar. Pour these in tiny little mason jar, put a cup on it and freeze it. It will last till the end of time. So now all there is to do, I gotta taste it. You see the smoke? Normally I am stupid and I would taste this immediately because I'm, I'm, I'm eager to taste it. But the smoke led me to believe that this is very hot. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna use my finger. Oh man. The gorgonzola is there, the smokiness, the two Italian cheeses, Grana Padana and Montaggi, they're delicious. And it's creamy, thanks to the fontina, thanks to the cheddar. Cheese sauce is truly a knockout. Once again, we put it out of the park. Fabio's Kitchen, thank you for watching. <laughs>